Well, thanks, Bob. We certainly come on the air today very saddened by the events that occurred in Orlando yes. yesterday, the worst mass shooting in American history. Uh, 50, 49 people were killed, 53 injured by an act of terror and I think an act of hate uh, by one single person uh, who decided to just take things under his own hand and yeah. try to do something uh, out of his own anger, yeah. uh, his own evil heart. Uh, and it's horrific to see that sort of thing and to see the sorrow that people experience. And so we at Basic Gospel certainly extend our condolences to the families, the friends of those that were killed in this this act of horror yeah. uh, yesterday. And I think it's important for us as believers in Christ to engage in praying. Uh, and I think there's so many people that we need to be praying for in in times like this, certainly yeah. the people, and and we, we encourage our listeners to do that. Uh, but we're going to talk more about uh, some other folks that we should be praying mm-hmm. for as well. What were some of your thoughts, Bob, as you uh, saw the news reports yesterday? Well, as I turned on Fox, the Fox News Channel, the uh, first thing I saw was young Peter Ducey doing an on-the-site on the uh, report. And uh, one of the first things that I noticed that uh, came out of his mouth was that this was a gay nightclub, a, a, a club called Pulse. And I immediately thought to myself, oh no, I wonder I wonder where some of our brothers are going to go with this. And I literally, as uh, Greg Park and I were speaking over lunch, he mentioned to me that there's one church that come, came out and said that uh, these folks were killed because they were gay. That is so wrong. That is so off base. It is not about being gay. These are people that God deeply loved. These are people that Jesus Christ died for. The sad thing is that we don't know how many, if any, of those had heard a gospel presentation. So that's what we're about at Basic Gospel. We're, we're here to present the basic gospel, which is Jesus came, he died, he was buried, he was resurrected, and he has given us life. That's the message that we want to convey, not the message that, hey, they were gay, and that's why they were killed. Yeah, that's... That that's not part of the language of the of the gospel. Absolutely, um, not. the gospel is about new life in Jesus. It's about hope. It's about forgiveness. It's about mercy, judgment, and condemnation. Uh, Jesus said that He did not come into this world to judge the world, but to save the world. And he does so through his death, burial, and resurrection. So that is the message that we bring to the table as far as uh, Christians are concerned. And we just need to be praying for more opportunities uh, to do so. Uh, I I know a lot of times we try to diagnose the problems and and try to figure out exactly the whys and the wherefores. What compelled this guy to pick up a gun and and to do what he did, to go into a, a nightclub, and pull the trigger so many times so that 49 people would lie dead and 53 others would be wounded. What What is the heart of that? Why would somebody do it? We want to blame radical Islam, and certainly there's a belief system uh, that somebody would uh, grab hold of and, and use to justify their actions. But there's something deeper, isn't there, Richard? Yeah, th- this is about humanity. And this is about lost humanity. This is about spiritually dead humanity doing what only spiritually dead people can do. It's in our hearts. It, it's, it's who we think we are and it's who we th- or what we think we need to do in order to get attention or to do something for a particular God or belief system, you know, trying to score points so that we go to a good place after we die. This is craziness, and, it, and it's not Christianity versus Islam. It's not about homosexuality. It's not about the government response, whatever it's going to be, and we hope it's wise. Um, this is about people who don't know Jesus and whose root cause is that they are spiritually dead. Why would we be surprised that spiritually dead people do the things that get done these days? It's hard enough as a child of the living God with the indwelling Holy Spirit to maintain in some of these situations, to not want to lash out in anger and in fear and in in scorched earth. But that's not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Love is the answer. Not the love of humanity, because love of humanity is an objective thing. We're talking about the love of God. The, The agape love of God is the only thing strong enough to get inside of us 
change our minds, renew our thinking, help us to choose more wisely, and how to respond to things rather than just react and do something horrific like yeah. this guy did. Yeah, the Bible is is so clear. Jesus said it, you know, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. Uh, he said that several several different occasions. And Jesus is in the business of changing hearts. Yes. Uh, Jeremiah knew about that as well. He said the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? And and that's the problem of mankind. We have evil, wicked hearts. That's why the gospel is the solution. Why? Because Jesus does something with our hearts, changes them from the inside out so that we can truly love God and in loving God can actually love our fellow human being. And that's what the world needs now, but it comes down to God doing something in our hearts, and that's why the gospel is so vitally important. So uh, as we talked about, I think we as believers, uh, we have this privilege of praying, uh, of, of, of talking to our Heavenly Father, of talking to the one who loved us and gave himself for us in times like these. So we should pray that God would comfort those who are grieving at this yeah. at this particular moment that they would find comfort and hope and bob as you you said it it doesn't matter you know what a person is and what they self identify as and their sexual preferences they're human beings Absolutely. everybody is a human being and at the deepest part of who we are we have the same needs to know that we're loved to know that we're accepted by god and we pray that god the God of all compassion will bring some comfort, will bring some truth, will bring some grace and mercy into the lives of people as they're grieving. We also want to pray for our government officials and law enforcement teams. It's it's a tough situation oh, that they're in. And we pray that you know, they'll have the wisdom to know how to identify these enemies. It's not like it was in World War II or World War I where everybody was in their uniforms and you could identify them by the clothes they wore. This is a whole different ball game, and it takes discernment and wisdom, and, and we just pray that that wisdom will be theirs in abundance. We also pray that they would have the tenacity and courage to bring about swift justice uh, in these situations. But we also want to lift up the body of Christ, the church. Um, the church in today's world has lost its confidence in the power of the gospel to change lives. So pray. Let this be a catalyst to pray that the church would regain its confidence in the gospel and the sheer power of of the Lord Jesus Christ to reach in and to give life to those who are spiritually dead, to recognize that this truly is a heart problem. And then three, the, the boldness and the courage to lift up the name of Jesus Christ as the only solution, as God's yes. only only plan yes. to bring about change in this world. And I think as, if we will endeavor to pray along those lines and to do so earnestly and authentically, um, I, I think it will start to do something in our own hearts and minds. And yeah. so it, it was just such a tragic, tragic story. Just, you know, one more of many that have been written yeah. uh, over the last year and over the last 20 years here in, in this world that we live in. Um, this is a world that is anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti-everything uh, good. And thanks be to God that we have Jesus, yes, that indeed. we have another kingdom that's being built, and we have the opportunity to rescue people out of that world of darkness and draw them into the kingdom of light and love in Jesus Christ. Let's go about our task, do it boldly, courageously, and let God work through us as he has said he would do so.